Hi, I'm Anna Houck, here with another great debate. 2020 has been a big year. With the election and the pandemic, it's also the 400th anniversary of the resumed landing of the Pilgrims at Plymouth Rock. In this month of Thanksgiving, which also happens to be Native American Heritage Month, it's time to take a look at the history behind our feasting traditions. Many of us first learned about Pilgrims and Natives in kindergarten, and from the Peanuts Holiday Special. But where did the idea originate? And do we have it all wrong? Does Thanksgiving mark a monumental moment in the founding of our country, or is it a fable of white settlement and racial harmony? What exactly are we celebrating? The first Thanksgiving, held in 1621, was not a Thanksgiving in pilgrim terms, but a rejoicing, according to David Silverman, professor of history at George Washington University and author of This Land is Their Land, The Wampanoag Indians, Plymouth Colony, and the Troubled History of Thanksgiving. For a pilgrim, Giving thanks would have required fasting and a quiet reflection. A rejoicing, however, included drinking, target practice, and contests of strength and speed. It was a party full of people shooting at things and feasting on party favorites, like wild turkey, fish, eels, and boiled cornmeal. A few of the things were missing back then. Potatoes had not yet been introduced to the Colombian exchange, and sadly, there wasn't any pie, as there was no butter nor sugar. The celebration marked the settlement's first successful harvest and probably took place in October, not November. One thing is for certain, Indians were not invited, but they showed up just the same, in large number led by the Wampanoag's leader, Osimakin, also called Massasoit. All that shooting had led the natives to believe they were under attack, so the event we refer to as the first Thanksgiving was really an out-of-control party and a misunderstanding between neighbors. This misunderstanding was understandable. After all, the Wampanoags had experienced a century of violent encounters and enslavement by Europeans before the Pilgrims even landed. In fact, they had driven the Pilgrims away from their first landing site before finally deciding to try diplomacy instead. Why? Because the Wampanoags had just emerged from a pandemic that had killed almost 90% of their people, one of the deadliest pandemics in America. So the remaining Wampanoags consolidated their survivors and lands, reestablished self-governance, and formed a mutual defense pact with white settlers, who, in turn, showed their gratitude by not inviting them to their party, but then later cheated, abused, and sold them into bondage. And by 1676, Thanksgiving had taken a decidedly darker turn, as the people of Plymouth celebrated with Osamican's son's head on a pike. So how do we get from a head on a pike to a drumstick on a plate? Let's ask one of BHS's history experts, Mr. Seidel. Thank you for having me. Mr. Seidel, if documented history seems to debunk the story of the first Thanksgiving, then why are we celebrating something that never happened? Well, it's not that the first Thanksgiving didn't happen. It's just that it's a lot more complicated than we typically think. I, Thanksgiving as we know it really began during the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln, 1863, issues a proclamation asking for Americans to take time and uh, just express gratitude and have humility. And basically during the darkest days of the Civil War, take some time out of their lives and think about all of the blessings that we still had, even while we were really in the throes of this very difficult uh, war. New England celebrations of that first Thanksgiving with the Pilgrims and the Natives became blended with Abraham Lincoln's proclamation asking for gratitude and humility. And you put those together and that's kind of become the Thanksgiving that we know today. In 1939, FDR very famously established the fourth Thursday of the month as the day that we would celebrate Thanksgiving. And he did that in order to prolong our shopping holiday. And you could say that FDR then made shopping part of our Thanksgiving celebration. And of course, since 1945, the NFL has consistently played football games on Thanksgiving and that is definitely one of our cultural traditions as well. Do you consider Thanksgiving to be more culturally significant or historically significant? Can it be both and still be a holiday? Well, culturally, we agree on Thanksgiving. I, all Americans agree with the values of family and gratitude and celebrating abundance and shopping and football. It is the historical aspect of the holiday that sometimes can I create some disagreement. And that disagreement, that frustration really stems from the oversimplification of the holiday. And I think the fact that for some Americans, the only thing they know about colonial and native interaction is the first Thanksgiving. And we all know 
that that is that's profoundly underdeveloped and it's incorrect. So it's not necessarily that the story is part mythology. It's disappointment that for some that story is the only part of the history that they know. What's fun about history is the complexity. What's fun about history is that different groups look at the evidence and they interpret it or they value it slightly different ways. And what we need to avoid is forcing one interpretation of events on everyone. The Wampanoags have held on through 400 years of oppression and today debate whether Thanksgiving should be a day of mourning or a day of reconciliation. Should we remove pilgrims and natives from our Thanksgiving holiday? Expand the narrative accurately to reflect historical fact? Or get rid of the holiday altogether? Chew it over and then tell us what you think at greatdebate238 at gmail.com. For BHS TV, I'm Anna Houck. Happy feasting.